Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation with absolute value. We have z times the absolute value of z minus 1 equals 20 plus 20 i and we're going to be solving for z values. Are there any solutions? How many z values are there? Let's go ahead and find out. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made uh, nine videos on basics of complex numbers. Also, if you're interested in algebra and number theory style problems, you can check out my other channel, which is cyber math. Great, so how do we solve these kinds of equations? First of all, one thing that you should always, always remember is the name of this channel, right? Of course, so that you can like, subscribe, and comment. So the name of this channel is A plus B I. But that also helps us solve some problems. So why don't we use it? Let's replace z with a plus b i. Now, this is a complex number by definition. i is the square root of negative 1, and a and b are real numbers. So that's how complex numbers are basically defined. But if you wanted the details, you wanted to learn more about the details, you can go ahead and check out the lecture videos, as I said earlier. So what is z minus 1? We're going to subtract 1 from this and then take the absolute value, and that is going to be the absolute value of a minus one plus bi. Now we can kind of treat this as our real part, and this will be our imaginary part. And how do you find the absolute value of a complex number? You square the real part, and then square the imaginary part, and then you add them up, and you take the square root of the sum of squares, okay? And this comes from Pythagorean theorem, because if you plot a complex number, this is going to give you r, the distance from 0, that is also the same as the absolute value, and then it's going to make an angle of theta, but that doesn't matter if this is a and this is b, the r can be found from Pythagorean theorem. Make sense? In this case, of course, I'm talking about a minus 1 instead of a, because we subtracted 1 from z before we take the absolute value. So, these two things are not necessarily equal. And it's, they're not equal for real numbers all the time either, but with complex numbers, this actually represents uh, some type of curve, uh, which we call a locus problem. We can talk about that later in another video maybe, but let's go ahead and proceed with this. Now we do want this times the z to equal that. So absolute value of a complex number is real, so we multiply z by a real number and we get 20 plus 20i. Nice. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Now we have a plus b i, which is z, multiplied by the absolute value, which is square root of a minus 1 squared plus b squared equals 20 plus 20 i. Nice. Now we're going to go ahead and distribute this, right? When we distribute, we're going to get hopefully some equation. Since uh, the absolute value is real, we can go ahead and multiply that by a to get the real part for the left hand side and then multiply by b to get the imaginary part right like this and then from here we get 20 plus 20 i awesome now what does this mean this means that we can actually set up a system of equations right like what we can kind of uh, set the real parts equal to each other and the imaginary parts equal to each other, right? So how does that happen? Uh, well, we can kind of write this as follows. a times the square root of a minus 1 squared plus b squared equals 20. And then b times the same thing, right? If I'm doing the right thing, is going to equal 20. Which means, since the radicals are equal, does this mean that a is equal to b? Looks like it. So let's go ahead and set a equal to b. And then from here, we get something interesting. If a and b are equal, then I can kind of replace b with a or a with b, doesn't matter. Let's take the first equation. a times the square root of a minus 1 squared plus a squared, I replace b with a equals 20. And then from here, we just need to solve the resulting equation. This will give me a squared plus a squared minus 2a plus 1. And then that is equal to 20. And we can kind of uh, square both sides 
and that should give me 400, right? And then when you distribute, this is going to give you 2a to the fourth minus 2a cubed plus a squared minus 400 is equal to 0. And guess what? From here, we're supposed to solve for a and then, of course, for b, right? So how do we do that? Well, we could probably use the rational root theorem, looking at the factors of this number divided by the factors of this number and all possible combinations as a, written as a quotient. So, uh, for example, uh, if I take one from here and two from here, that'll be one half. If I take the two and the two, that'll be one. If I take a four and a two, that'll be a two, so on and so forth. Um, and, you know, you, you'll get many other solutions, obviously. There's a lot of candidates, but what would happen if A is equal to 4? Let's just test it out, okay? So if A is equal to 4, then we're going to get 2 times 4 to the 4th power, which is 256, minus 2 times 4 cubed, which is 64, plus 4 squared, which is 16, minus 400. Let's go ahead and find out. This is going to be 512 minus 128 plus 16 minus 400. Now, what is 512 minus 128? If you think about it, we can kind of subtract here, I guess. This is going to be a 4. This is going to be an 8. And this should be uh, 384, right? 384 uh, plus 16 is going to give me 400. And beautiful. <laughs> We're going to get a 0. Isn't that awesome? Well, of course, this wasn't by chance. I knew that A equals 4 is supposed to be a solution, right? Of course. Now, A is equal to 4 implies that B is equal to 4, right? So what does that mean? A is equal to 4 because A and B are equal, remember? B is also equal to 4, and that means Z is equal to 4 plus 4i. Nice. Is that the answer? Is that the only solution? Let's go and find out, and we can actually take a different look at this problem and rewrite the original equation. Z times the absolute value of Z minus 1 equals... 20 plus 20i, we should probably make this a little bit more uh, perpendicular or uh, more vertical looking. Okay, like this maybe a little bit. Now, think about it this way. Um, absolute value of z minus 1 needs to divide this. And looks like uh, we can factor out a 20, and this can be written as 1 plus i, right? By the way, there's also another way to approach it, but I'll show you. First of all, here's what I want you to think about. Uh, looking at uh, factors of 20, we could probably kind of estimate or just guesstimate the answer. It could be 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, whatever. But one thing to keep in mind is, whatever uh, this number is, the rest is going to be left for z. So in other words, if this is 4, this is 5 plus pi phi. Makes sense? But I, that wasn't the answer. We know that, so that's kind of not fair. If this is 5, this is 4 plus 4i. And when this is 4 plus 4i, it kind of makes sense because when you subtract 1 from 4 plus 4i, you get 3 plus 4i, whose absolute value equals 5. So you kind of need to find a number such that uh, maybe I can kind of uh, approach it this way. This will probably be a little bit more systematic than just guess and check. I can say, okay, what if this is equal to r? And then I kind of have like uh, z equals 20 plus 20i over r. Make sense? So from here, maybe I can just say, okay, um, if r is equal to 1, and then z is supposed to be 20 plus 20i, but its absolute value isn't that obvious, right? If you subtract 1 from it, of course. 19 plus 20i, its absolute value is not going to equal uh, 20. Because if r is 1, then absolute value, wait a minute, I'm, I mean, this is not equal to 1. That's what I'm talking about, okay? So if r is equal to 2, so on and so forth. You can go through these cases and hopefully find a good solution at some point. But one thing that, another thing that I'm thinking about right now is the following. I don't know if this is going to help, but I just thought of this. You can take the absolute value one more time. And what that gives you is the absolute value of products, right? This one and this one. And that'll be 20 root 2 for this one, right? Because that's what it is. So you're kind of thinking, can I break this down into two real numbers such that one of them is going to be the absolute value of z, 
one of them is going to be the absolute value of z minus 1. But that's going to be a little complicated. Distributing may not help either. Maybe something like this. You can stipulate. But anyways, these are pretty complicated. I think it's the best idea, in my opinion, is to replace z with a plus pi and solving for that. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.